Did you know you can start a successful social work business in a few short weeks? Well, stick around to find out how. If you started a social work business and you're getting no sales or you're ready to start a social work business, but you're not quite sure how, even though you might have watched some of the videos on this channel and you're still not fully sure how this works, in this video, I am going to walk you through what I call the foundations that you need to start. And over the next few weeks, this is going to be a training series that will dig deeper into what we cover today. So before we get started talking about how to start your social work business, let's make sure you're in the right place. And so this training series is going to be for you if you are a social work consultant and so you provide expert advice to people and you give businesses and or individuals solutions to improve their performance, solve problems and achieve their goals. This training series is also for you if you sell or want to sell digital products. And so what are digital products? Well, they are intangible goods that are delivered electronically, including software, eBooks, digital courses, digital media like videos and or music. And then this training is also for you if you are a social work coach or would like to transition into coaching services and what are coaching services in regard to what social workers might do as a coach? Well, you would give personalized guidance and support to help individuals achieve personal or professional goals and improve their performance. So this is just merely one way to coach. There are multiple ways to coach, but this training is for you if you do one of these three things. And so what is phase one of the training? What is phase one of the things that you need to do to start your social work business? Well, first and foremost, you need to make what I call the five key decisions. And so the five key decisions answers the following questions. What are you good at? Who needs your help? Who's your competition? what's missing so where is there a gap in the current services being offered to the people that need your help and then how can you serve them right so how can you fill in these gaps and it's not just about filling in the gaps you can replicate services that other people are offering but you do want to think about your competitive edge that is going to make someone look at your business as opposed to someone else's business and you do this by initially addressing what someone else in your competitive market is not addressing and so first let's look at when you make the five key decisions the first decision you need to make is to determine how you add value. So what are your skills, knowledge, talents, and areas of expertise that will help a client, right? Next, you want to identify that target audience, right? So this is going to be your client or customer. And so who is the person that needs your help? Who are they, right? Where do they shop? What do they read? What is their pain, problem, or desire, right? What is their pain point? Where do they need a transformation? Because that's what businesses do. Businesses solve problems and they help people gain a transformation. Sometimes this transformation could be small. Sometimes this transformation could be large. But essentially, that is what your business does. And so you need to figure out what problem this person is having that you can help them solve that problem. Next, the third key decision is what is your market, which is the competition, right? And so who is doing what you are doing? And then where is the gap in their service, right? I talked about this when we talked about answering this question. And then you also want to look at what are the trends, the current trends in the market. And so you have to definitely dig deep into this because if you don't know your market, you won't know your competitive edge. You won't know what your competition is doing and you won't know how to separate yourself from the pack. Next, in step four, you want to have your business marketing plan. So you want to start to look at your business marketing plan. So how will you showcase your skills, knowledge, talent, and areas of expertise, right? In step five, you want to determine your audience attraction method. So how you will get clients and or customers interested in your business via the marketing strategies that you come up with in step four. 
Then we move on to phase two. So the phase two activities of starting your social work business is digging deeper into your business marketing plan, right? And so the business marketing plan, digging deeper into this answers the following questions. How will you let people know your business exists, right? Because a lot of people think if I build it, they will come like field of dreams. This this is not the case, right? I've said this plenty of times. You must let people know your business exists. You must showcase how you can help people. This is what's going to make them interested in you and interested in your services. It also answers the question, how will you provide them value while bringing them on the customer journey? So when people encounter your business, everyone is not going to be ready to buy. And so you need to bring them on a customer journey. And then how will you address the different needs of your customer or client in the decision making process? So you address this with content marketing. And so you create content that helps your client learn, implement, and obtain small wins. Now, I know a lot of the social workers I speak with, who I'm working with, who want to start their business and they know they need to be on social media, are reluctant to be on social media for many different reasons. Fear of judgment, just all of the angst that people feel when you think about starting something like a YouTube channel or creating a social media presence for your business. Yes, I get it. It's very scary, but it's a necessary thing in this day and age. If you are not engaging in some form of content marketing, you are not getting in front of your audience in the most efficient way that you possibly can. And then after you look at delivering content, you want to make sure that the content is relevant to where the audience is in the customer journey. And so you have to do these things in order for that content to be valuable to that person based on where they are. Then you move into phase three of starting your business. And this is building your email list. And content marketing is going to make this process so much easier. And so building an email list answers the following questions. How will you communicate with your audience to nurture the relationship? What happens if social media goes down, right? So if you are marketing your business via content marketing, we all know that Facebook and Instagram have gone down. As long as the internet is not down and you have access to email, you still have access to your leads and or customers. And so building an email list is ultra important for that reason. What happens if people don't buy my services or products, right? So what happens if you launch your services or products and what it means to launch is that you open it up for sales, right? Your services and or products may not be open all year. It's based on capacity, right? So if you are a solopreneur, you might not have the capacity to have your products and or services open all year. You might only have capacity if you have a high-end coaching practice, you might only have capacity to work with five people at a time, right? Or you might have a wait list and you send an email out to let people know that there is space available in your program, right? And so because of this, you want them on your email list so you can have a conversation with them. Next, it answers the question, what if I don't have a product or service yet, right? So what if you haven't figured this out yet? What if you haven't fully figured out your target audience? Does that mean you need to wait? Absolutely not. You need to really delve deep into how you add value. And then you kind of need to throw spaghetti at the wall. So you need to create a social media present, discuss topics on where you can add value, your skills, knowledge, talents, and areas of expertise. You want to create content that highlights those things. And then your audience will start to come to you and they will ask you questions and give you feedback. And at that point, you may get enough feedback to develop your services and or products because now you know exactly what your target audience needs, right? And so the best way to do this is to have your email list because if you don't have a product or service yet, you can get them on the email list, keep nurturing that relationship with them. And when you finally do have a product or service, you have a group of people that are primed buyers. And then finally, how do I run promotions and specials? You can run promotions and specials via your social media content. If you're making some serious coin, you might be able to run ads, right? 
But you can also run promotions and specials to your email list. And the larger your email list, the more people you will probably have ready to purchase. This training will look at what an email list is and why you should use one, which we did cover in those questions. And there are four components that are needed to start successfully building your email list. And so what are the four components? Well, you have a lead magnet, right? So this is going to be a freebie that you give to someone. It's a valuable freebie that helps them gain a small win and helps prime them for your product and or service. Landing page. You got to deliver the lead magnet via the landing page, right? So you absolutely need this. You need nurturing emails. So you need a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly email that needs to go out to keep your customers interested, to keep you top of mind, right? To make your products and or services available. Again, to nurture the relationship. And then you also need list management. So, so you don't get booted out by Google. And so you don't get flagged as spam and all of these things. You want to make sure that your deliverability rate stays high. And to do this, you want to manage your list. And so using these foundational steps to start your business helps you generate leads, convert, and make money. And that is exactly what you want to do in your business, right? And so this is the most sustainable way to start and grow a business right now. And so throughout this training series, we're going to dig deeply into all of these phases, right? All three phases, we're going to touch on trainings that will help you if you watch the entire series. In a few short weeks, you will have all of the foundational information that you need to start the process of launching your social work business or growing your current social work business that's just not making any money or getting any sales, right? If you found this video valuable, please be sure to like it and share it with someone who might find it valuable as well. Be sure to click the notification button so you are notified every time I have a new upload, especially because this series is coming out. And until next time, this is your girl Michelle saying, stop waiting. The time is now. Start your social work business. Bye for now.